you are my God, and in you I trust. He will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. He will cover you with his wings. You will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day. Or the clocks that strike in the dark or the eagles that kill in daylight. Verse 7. A thousand may fall dead beside you, ten thousand all around you, but you will not be harmed. You will look and see how the wicked are punished. You made the Lord your defender, the most high your protector. And so no disaster will strike you. No violence will come near your home. God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. You will trample down lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes. God says, I will save those who love me and will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. Last verse, uh, 15. Then they will call to me, I will answer them when they are in trouble. I will be, I will be with them, I will rescue them, and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Particular 
directly from the apostle on the particular church. For example, how you do things in the church. So, it is a epistle. Uh, uh, but on the gospel, it's different. Those are examples. So, you don't have to follow it on detail. For example, when Christ uh, prays, he kneels down. It doesn't mean when you pray, you also need to kneel down. You can pray, you know, sitting down, kneeling down, whatever you want. But God looks at the, the heart. So it's more of a narrative. So this text is Psalm. Psalm is what? What kind of literature? Poetic. Okay? Psalms are poetic. So you don't have to look at it in a literal word for word construction. So it's more of the the It's not uh, word for word or literally, it should not be uh, interpreted word for word or literal, literally. But instead, the more important thing is the message is trying to convey. To us, uh, most of our here are people, so for example, uh, you're courting someone, really go up. And then you said, I will give you the star, the, the, the moon, the sun. I'll give you everything. And then so legal. So it doesn't mean that it's literally saying that he will give you the star, the moon. It's more of a, a poem. Okay, so like the song. So the 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 guy is trying to somehow convey something that he's willing to do everything to win your love. It doesn't mean Literally, he's going to give you the sun, the moon, and the ocean. No. It's like, it's a hyperbole. It's like saying, I will, I'm willing to give you everything. Okay? So, don't look on those texts literally, word for word, but try to understand what is the author trying to convey. On Psalm 91, the scholars are disagreeing whether who's the author. They say it's Moses. Some others say it's David. But for me, I think it's my personal opinion is David. Because if you are familiar with song, what is what, what is the most popular songs on the of all songs? Psalms 23. The Lord and the Shepherd I shall not want. Right? So that is the most popular song, uh, song yeah. right? And this is composed by King David. So if you look on the Psalm 23 and compare it to Psalm 91, the way it was constructed is the same. So I think for me, it's more of David than Moses, okay? So the Jews, the Hebrews are the Jews, they think it's Moses, but most of the Christians, they think it's David. Last Friday, uh, if you are here, who's here last Friday? You're in coffee shop. Raise your hand. If you're not here, you missed a, a very good coffee shop last Friday. I like it. What is the theme that was emphasized by Brother Christian? That's Friday. Foundation. Right? Foundation. So, in everything, foundation is so important. I remember we are, uh, Brother Vic is doing a, a, a shed in my backyard. And it took him two days to prepare the foundation because according to him that is so important the 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 the, okay. the assembly of the shed is just one day 
but it took them more than two days to prepare the foundation. So the preparation or the foundation took them three, three people to prepare. But the assembling of the shed only took them one day with two people. So that's how important the foundation is. Okay. So let's go first Psalm 23. Psalm 23 says, if you look at your NIV Bible, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. Okay? So if you read Psalm 23, the premise or the, the foundation of the whole Psalm 23 is on the first verse, which is, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I lack nothing. I don't need anything else. Does it mean if God is your God, or if the Lord is your shepherd, you're going to sit down? No. It means if God is your shepherd, you're complete. In Jerry McGuire's movie, you complete me. Something like that, right? Like, if God is with you, you're complete. And no matter how hard you work in life, if God is not in you, your work is in vain. So what, that is the main point of Psalm 23. Now in Psalms 91, the foundation of this psalm is on the first two verses. It says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust. My Bible is in my cell phone, so excuse me. Okay. So if you look at it, try to analyze it. He would dwell. So if you dwell on the most high, how do you say it? Nananahan. In Tagalog or Filipino, nananahan means you're, you're, you're staying, you're, you're living. On the most high, what's the result? You will rest or you will abide in the shadow. This is not an idea. You will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay? I'll read my name in my cell phone. And I will say of the Lord, my refuge and my purpose, my God, in whom I trust. So, the psalmist, or Psalm 91 says, if you dwell, what will happen? You will rest in the shadow. And therefore, because of that experience, you will say, God is my refuge and fortress. So, let me explain this. Okay. So, first, whoever. The word is, the key word is whoever. So, if you, as a person, put, or you dwell, instead of dwelling on some other things, dwelling on your problems, dwelling on circumstances, you don't look on those circumstances or those surroundings, those who surround you or whatever problems you have. Instead, you dwell on the presence of the Lord. What will happen? You will have rest on your shadow. It's like sitting or lying down on the dunyan of a tree in a cold you know, and resting. So if you dwell, then you will have rest. And therefore, because of that peace that passes understanding, you will say or you will proclaim, God is my refuge and fortress, in whom I trust. So the, my point here is this. The foundation of this Psalm 91 is very important. Okay? A lot, a lot of us are thinking, why is this person 
person like this? Why is this person like this? You don't understand. Why is he like this? It's because he has, this guy, this particular person, has an issue. Okay? Has an issue. He doesn't have so he doesn't solve the, 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 the main the main thing in his life yet, which is what? Having this personal relationship with God. Okay? So if a particular person is doing a lot of stupid things or a lot of non-Christian things, I think it's not because or anything else. The main, the main reason why he acts or he behaves like that is because he hasn't experienced God yet. As the psalmist says, if you dwell, if you dwell in my shelter, you will rest in my shadow, therefore you will live or you will proclaim God as your fortress and refuge. So that's the main thing, the most important thing. Okay? So that's the foundation. Hopefully I'm, I'm clear on that. Another thing that I need to emphasize on this text. The most high on the uh, verse one is El Yon in Hebrew, which means the king of kings. So God is not just a king, but he is the king among kings. And the word Almighty on that text is Shaddai. You know where the, where the song El Shaddai? El Shaddai means our God is capable beyond imagination. Okay? So, if you have a personal relationship with God, you will be amazed a lot of times. Because he is, he will be doing a lot of things in your life that is beyond your expectation, beyond your imagination. I don't know, but I have a lot of personal experience like, you know the, I like this, the aha moment, 